everyone. Welcome. I'm Steve Lookner from Right Side Studios in Auburn, Alabama. Just wanted to come on tonight with a little bit of a news alert for you. And also, first, just to apologize about the sound. We're making some improvements this weekend in the studio, and as a result of it, uh, we're in the middle of doing a thing with the sound, so the sound might sound a little distant or something, but you, I think you can hear me, So, uh, but it'll, the quality will be better come next week. And the video quality should be better actually tonight. So we're working on improvements for you. Anyways, um, so uh, earlier today, the news we want to update you about is that North Korea test fired another missile. Uh, if I remember right, this it seems like this is about the fourth test in four weeks for them. They seem to be on like a once a week or once a weekend schedule now. Uh, this missile was, uh, it flew reportedly for six minutes. It was launched from the eastern part of North Korea. It landed in the Sea of Japan uh, in an uh, area of the water which is excluded. It's an exclusive economic zone, but it's disputed between South Korea and Japan. So an exclusive economic zone is, let's see if I can explain this briefly. Uh, when you're a country, you have the water that's close to your country, which you have total control over. It's like your territory. Then uh, beyond that, there's something called an exclusive economic zone, where you don't you can't control what's happening on the surface of the water. So like anyone else can sail or like, you know, travel on that water. But you do have rights to like uh, the, uh, what's going on underneath the surface. So like the fishing uh, and uh, you also have rights to like, uh, you know, wind power and water power. So it's like, it's not your territory, but it's sort of, it's like sort you have sub, some sovereignty over the water. So basically it landed in, in water that is kind of close to both South Korea and Japan and is considered uh, in the econ exclusive economic zone of one or the other of them. It's disputed. So uh, both those countries have expressed concern. I know South Korea already had this morning like an emergency meeting. I believe they already had it. And uh, it's just a, it's another uh, firing of a missile. Also, it, it flew for six minutes. It flew for about uh, 450 kilometers that would be about 280 miles. So it certainly was not one of these. I've seen it labeled a successful test, but it's certainly not one of these tests where the uh, missile exploded on the launch pad or something. So we really have seen now uh, a concerted effort recently from North Korea to just test missiles a lot. This is their ninth test of the year. Uh, they're on a pace to, uh, you know, they've been ramping up their missile tests in the last few years, but they're on a pace this year to. Uh, outpace any of the previous few years of with missile tests. And, uh, you know, the real worry is that they're going to be able to eventually develop a missile that can fly long enough to hit the United States, and that's a missile that's able to carry a nuclear warhead on it. So, and this wasn't also, you know, another little piece of news, this wasn't really even that widely reported, it was a couple of days ago, North Korea did an, a surface-to-air missile test. So they are testing a lot of weapons technology, a lot of missile technology uh, in the last few months. And it seems like, you know, President Trump had spoken to President Xi, I think it was a couple months ago, at Mar-a-Lago at their summit. And, you know, the administration had reported that uh, things were going well with China and that China was putting pressure on North Korea to stop the tests. The pressure doesn't seem to be working very well. Uh, we, have, we are seeing, you know, one test a week, it, it seems like, if not more, because this week we kind of had two this weekend. So, uh, you know, will President Trump adjust his policy? Uh, are, are we any closer to any kind of possible military action or, uh, or some kind of stronger sanctions from the United States? We'll have to see if President Trump says anything about it this week. So we're not going to be on lo that long tonight. We just want to update you on this news. Uh, but if you do have any comments or questions about this topic, Feel free while we're on the air, you can contact me. You can reach me at, at Lookner on Twitter at L O O K N E R. Or you could email me, Steve.Lookner at RSBN.TV. So I'll grab a drink of water, excuse me. I also want to point out a little news that also happened tonight is President Trump started tweeting again. Uh, he hadn't tweeted much from the road. But uh, now that he's home, he started tweeting, and he's tweeted a bunch, and he's tweeted a bunch even tonight. Let me get those tweets out there for you, up there for you. So, President Trump sent out three tweets in the last hour. Uh, 54 minutes ago, he said, I suggest that we add more dollars to health care 
and make it the best anywhere. Obamacare is dead. The Republicans will do much better. Then 44 minutes ago, he said, uh, he tweeted out, the massive tax cuts slash reform that I have submitted. Uh, uh, oh, we have to take a, we take a break? Yeah. Sorry, we have to take a one minute break. We will be right back. We have to take a one minute break. We'll be right back. Hello again, sorry for that. Uh, I think we were able to improve the sound, so the sound should be much better now. Sorry for that before. Uh, this, uh, again, is our news alert uh, Sunday night update about, uh, we've been talking about the North Korean missile test that happened earlier today. And I was the middle, uh, another little piece of news I threw in there was that uh, President Trump uh, sent out a few tweets tonight. He's been tweeting more today since he's been home. And uh, President Trump sent out, uh, I was talking about the three tweets he sent out in the last hour. So fit, uh, I'm going to read those again. Well, I only read, had read one of them. So the first one is from 56 minutes ago, and President Trump said, I suggest that we add more dollars to health care and make it the best anywhere. Obamacare is dead. The Republicans will do much better. Then he tweeted out 46 minutes ago, the massive tax cuts slash reform that I have submitted is moving along in the process very well, ahead, actually ahead of schedule. Big benefits to all. And finally, this I think is the most interesting one. Uh, 33 minutes ago, President Trump tweeted out, the fake news media works hard at disparaging and demeaning my use of social media because they don't want America to hear the real story. So there were some... You know, there were some stories out that President Trump, when he came back, he wasn't going to be tweeting as much, and his tweets would all be examined by his team of people. Uh, he seems to be right at the level of tweets that he was before and tweeting in the same kind of way. You know, like, uh, like uh, 12 hours ago, he tweeted, Does anyone notice how the Montana congressional race was such a big deal to Dems and fake, was a big deal to Dems and fake news until the Republicans won? Uh, very uh, w uh, victory was poorly covered. So he's back to call, you know, talking about fake news and stuff. So I don't see much of a difference between his tweets these days and his tweets uh, before the trip. So uh, again, we're going to be on for just a few minutes tonight. And uh, if you would like to write in, you can either write, write to me on Twitter at look me at Lookner. I'm sorry, at L O O K N E R, or email me. I hope you're all having a good Memorial Day weekend and. Uh, I hope every, I assume everybody is, but uh, you know, if you ha I would encourage everyone, and I have to encourage myself to do this more too, to just remember Memorial Day weekend, uh, all of those who've lost their lives fighting for this country, uh, who've paid the greatest sacrifice for this country. I remember when I used to live in Los Angeles, I, hap I, I lived right next to the uh, vet to the National uh, Cemetery uh, in Westwood uh, Village, Los Angeles, and. Um, what they would do in the National Cemetery there is every Memorial Day, they would take little American flags and uh, several days before Memorial Day, they would put the flags, they would put a flag on each gravesite and there were thousands of them. I don't know exactly how many, but it's just, it's a giant ceremony, a cemetery and there were thousands of them. And on several Memorial Days when I was in LA, when I lived in this place, uh, I would just go and people would go and you'd walk around the cemetery and it was just a really, it was a really neat thing because 
you know, with all the with all the flags out there, it looked, I don't know if beautiful was the right word, but it did look beautiful, but it was like this beautiful tribute to everybody who was buried there. And you would walk through and it was just amazing because you would see people who'd fought in all kinds of wars, you know, there was World War One, World War Two, Korean War, Vietnam. I think you could even go back further, Spanish American War, and, uh, and 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 older wars. So, you know, it was a really cool thing. So, if you're ever in Los Angeles on Memorial Day, I would uh, recommend going to the uh, to the uh, this, this this. I think it's called L.A. I don't know if it's called Los Angeles National Cemetery, but it's a cemetery in Westwood. It's on Wilshire Boulevard, and it's a really or Sepul Wilshire or Sepulveda, one of the two. It's at the intersection of the two. But it's a really neat uh, thing to go out there on uh, Memorial Day. So I'm sad I can't do that. But uh, but uh, like a lot of like I'm sure many of you are. I'm taking trying to take time this weekend and remember all of those who fought for us. And, uh, you know, I've seen some people, I think Jake Tapper has been doing this. You know, Jake Tapper, he's been posting, like every few minutes he just posts a picture of someone, of a, a soldier who passed away in service for this country and gives like their name and their birth date and their, I don't know if it's their rank or what war they fought in, but I think those kind of things, I've seen people doing those kind of things this weekend, which I think is really cool. Uh, let's see here. I want to just call up my email and make sure I'm not ignoring any of you. Okay, that's good. And I want to also make sure I haven't uh, forgotten anything about North Korea. So they fired a missile. It was, I don't think I said it was, it, uh, it supposedly was a Scud type missile. Uh, America, the, uh, the, U.S. Pacific Command characterized it as a short-range missile, but it did fly 450 mile, uh, four, 280 miles slash 450 kilometers. And, you know, I know from past tests, it's hard to say, like, just when you hear about these missile tests, like, what exactly they're testing, because sometimes they test putting a certain payload on it, and sometimes they shoot it off at a certain angle. So it's hard to tell just from, you know, I certainly can't tell just from the information, well, it flew this amount of time and this many miles, whether it was successful or not. And I can't tell what exactly they were testing, but it does seem that it certainly wasn't uh, a total failure if it flew that many miles. I was also wondering, you know, they've been testing a lot of missiles lately, but they, a couple months ago, there was this rumor that they had all, they had gotten their nuclear weapons uh, test site all ready for a nuclear test. And they haven't done that nuclear test, and maybe that would be more provocative than a missile test. I'm sure at this point it would be more provocative. Will we see that at some time soon? Okay. Oh, Jake, I should talk about um, also Nick. Nix is coming on. Is he uh, starting tomorrow, Jake? So America First with Nick Fuentes is returning to Right Side Broadcasting, and uh, Nick will be on. Is it 4 p.m. Eastern, Jake? Yes, yeah, so Jake uh, and Jake's going to be, Jake, you're producing that, correct? Yeah. So Jake Seals, our uh, music star and producer star, will be uh, producing that tomorrow. And um, so we're really looking forward to having Nick back on the air. He's going to be here every weekday at 4 p.m. Eastern. So hope you join us for that and check Nick out. And okay, I think I'm basically caught up here. I'm going to give a minute in case I can't see the chat from where I am. So if anyone does have any comments they want to throw out about Memorial Day or the Korean missile, North Korean missile test, uh, feel free, but do it quickly. We're only going to be on for a little bit tonight. So uh, give me a shout on Twitter right now. Also, feel free to follow Right Side Broadcasting uh, at, at RSB Network and uh, subscribe to us on uh, YouTube and click the notifications bell when you subscribe to get updates. Thank you to all the moderators for moderating this, their chat, the chat this weekend, both on YouTube and on rsbn.tv. I'm trying to think of any other updates. Uh, we have posted, uh, we're we will be covering, so a bunch of you joined us for our coverage of the special election on last week from, uh, from uh, Montana. We're going to be covering also the Georgia special election. We'll have coverage of that. Uh, that's June 20th, and we've already, you can always already see the event on our Right Side YouTube page. Also, uh, President Trump, you know, he postponed his rally, which was supposed to be Thursday in Iowa. He's supposed to reschedule it. I saw a story saying he's going to reschedule it for the next couple of weeks. We'll let you know as soon as he rescheduled it. We're really looking forward to, really looking forward to covering that. 
And I've heard, I read a story in the Washington Post a couple days ago which suggested that maybe they'll start having more rallies now. Maybe President Trump, now that he's back from the, the trip, will want to take his message to the people more. We'd love for there to be more rallies. We love covering them and love bringing them to you. So our ears are open. Hopefully they have more rallies. And I'm just getting an update here about the location of the uh, uh, location of where the missile fell. Uh, J according to Jeffrey Lewis, um, Japan is now saying the impact point was 400 kilometers from the Oki Islands. So I have a little map here. I can actually put, this is from Jeffrey Lewis, but I'll show you. Let's see if that can actually read on camera. Oops, you know, if I leave my, leave it up there, it can read it. So I can show you that. That's the map I have. I don't know if you can even see that. But uh, Jake, this is, if you want to find it, Jake, this tweet is at, uh, at arms control wonk. That, that's at arms control wonk, all one word. But don't worry if you can't get it up there in time, Jake, because I didn't tell you I was going to show it. But that is a map. So basically, it, 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 it was launched from the east of North Korea and flew east and landed in this water that's sort of close to both South Korea and uh, Japan. It's a disputed exclusive economic zone. And let's see if there's any other updates I can give you on this. Oh, I think I also have, do I, can I read this? Is it not in Japanese? I was going to read you the J Japanese statement on the launch, but it's in Japanese, so I can't read that to you. Let me see if I can find you also the uh, Pacific Command statement from the US. Let me try to read that if I can find it here. This is a statement by the US Pacific Command about the, the, the missile test today. Um, let's see. US Pacific Command detected and tracked uh, what we assess was a North Korean missile launch at 10.40 p.m. Hawaii time, May 28th. The launch of a short-range ballistic missile occurred near Wonsan Airfield. The missile was tracked for six minutes until it landed into, in the Sea of Japan. We are working with our interagency partners on a uh, more detailed assessment. We continue to monitor North Korea's actions closely. U.S. Pacific Command stands behind our ironclad commitment to the security of our allies in the Republic of Korea and Japan. The North American Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD, assessed that the missile launch from North Korea did not pose a threat to, the North, to North America. So that is a statement from U.S. Pacific Command. And also I had heard reports that President Trump has been updated on the situation. So let me just check here. I don't think there are any comments I'm missing, but let me check real fast and make sure I'm not ignore, ignoring anyone. So this week, you know, no word yet on whether the press briefings will return this week. I would assume they would return, but I've also heard reports that perhaps President Trump might want to have fewer bref, press briefings nowadays. So don't know. We, if, they, if the press briefings happy this, happen this week, we will bring them to you. We will have our pre-show and our post-show. Uh, so looking forward to bringing you those again. And other breaking news, whatever happens, we'll bring, we'll bring it to you. We were covered here no matter what time of day, as long as we're not asleep, we will bring you breaking news. So I think, Jake, I think we're going to end it here. So, um, so that was our little, we just want to come out on quickly and update you uh, about the North Korean missile tests. But we'll be keep our eye on the news this week. Uh, hope you have a good Memorial Day tomorrow and you're enjoying your weekend. And uh, keep watching Right Side for the latest uh, news and uh, the latest on President Trump and the latest on uh, all kinds of news. And uh, hope uh, if, if, uh, if you like our programming, please uh, follow us at Rights on, on Twitter at RSB Network. I'm at, at Lookner, L-O-O-K-N-E-R. Jacob Seals is at, at Jacob RSBN Music. And uh, feel free to consider uh, donating to us because we are viewer supported. We rely for, for your support to stay on the air. And... Uh, uh, we will, um, if you want to donate, you can go to at rsbn, uh, sorry, rsbn.tv slash donate. That's rsbn.tv slash donate. We got a number of donations during our coverage of the uh, election results from Montana. So thank you again to everybody who donated. That was really kind of you. And uh, look forward to bringing you more events in the future. So uh, for now, I am Steve Luckner. 
Hope you have a good rest of your weekend. We will see you uh, during as the, when as, we'll see you this week. Whenever the news starts happening, uh, we will be here again. So uh, keep your eye on right side and have a great rest of your long weekend. And uh, once again, uh, uh, salute to all of the uh, men and women who've given their lives in the service of this country and who've enabled this country to be what it is and fought for our freedom. And uh, we remember all of them this Memorial Day. So thank you for watching.